Hello friends! The second 7 days to die development stream covering 1.0 release went off much smoother than the first. We could tell it was better organized with a plan for what to cover. In this video, I'm going to quickly go through the main pieces I picked up and condense the 2 hour stream into hopefully far less. Oh yeah, when is it coming out? As luck would have it, Rick spilled the beans. I made a video but in a nutshell, June 21st for Streamer Weekend, June 24th for Public Experimental, and a month later for Stable and Console Release. Of course, they did qualify that it's barring any issues that might prevent it, though it's looking good. The third development stream which should come next week will likely have them doing a Let's Play of the 1.0 release, so we should get to see it in action. Random Gen has been improved, faster generation and there's now a biome layout, Burnt Forest is back. 8k can generate in 45 seconds depending on your system specs. There's more road smoothing, better PUI placement for performance reason, with more remnant PUIs to give variety and provide some better performance. Looking at the progression updates, it is shifting to rely more on crafting versus just looting. And this means that trader rewards have been reduced, less dukes, less overpowered high quality high tier weapons in their experience instead of a day 30 endgame it was more like day 70. Item bonuses and stats rebalance so that higher tier is always better than the lower tier. Crafting has been updated and recipes tweaked with the new armor added. Legendary, the new Q6 crafting is a thing. It requires a legendary part which can be found in higher tier PUI such as tier 4 and 5 or their quest rewards, sometimes in armor chests. Purple is now the legendary tier. Traders are now per biome type and will always send you to the next higher tier biome for a trader opening quest. Also, quest tiers can be rolled back so you're not stuck with higher tier quests just because you've progressed more. You can choose a lower tier if you want to. Armor perk stats increase as their quality does. Games should play significantly better with performance updates. There are 70 brand new PIs with many old ones also updated. For instance, 5 new tier 5 POIs. Zombie spawning and POIs have been tweaked to provide better performance. There's more use of trigger system for POI specific actions. Zombie health is also scaling to better adjust for multiplayer parties. New school, new theater, new hotel, new skyscraper, new armor camp, refinery and so on. There are now about 750 unique locations in the game. A bunch of new voiceovers have been put in the game exceeding 1200 files, custom made for each trader for instance. New vehicle models and mod tweaks such as the visual updates when you're adding the mods. The 4x4 has that front plow that takes less damage when you run over things. The minibike model has been updated, explosions have been improved visually. New motorcycle model. The new Duke collector has those expandable mods that can be gotten at the traders. Turning to crossplay, it works right now implemented and tested. However, it requires certification from Microsoft and Sony to be enabled for the launch game, which is a complex issue to navigate. They hope to get client-side mods for console. Twitch integration though will launch on console natively. It is confirmed in and working. Q&A had a number of questions answered. No, you cannot die outfits. Zombie varieties do not differ in stats, although it would be nice if it did. The fun pimps are considering adding a red radiated tie, which is harder than the regular green radiated for higher progression. Weather and environmental survival is coming as per roadmap. Console will not have split screen. Console control support has been much improved. Implemented systems like the new challenge systems are in XML and fully moddable. 7 Days to Die will not be on Game Pass for now, although considered for next year. Discount for existing owners on console for digital versions appear to be a goal. Working on, but it is a complex issue to allow a discount for physical copy owners. There are a few new achievements in the game. It is possible the game could come to Switch Cloud or maybe Switch 2 in the future. Direwolf model has been updated to an undead type and pretty much all the player animations have been updated with sound effects continually going through updates. Third person play is not yet supported, but it is something that they want to do. Game price is going up, but the Funpins feels it is worth the value. They now have 60 to 70 people working on the game. Dedicated food models are being worked on and will come in a patch. All alphas will still be available on Steam for play. There are world border changes with a better system for showing safe direction. With the environmental survival as per the roadmap, there will be real radiation in the wasteland. 
great progress had been made on the story. More on that in the future. In general, the stream had a fair bit of good information, but I still have to say that I feel that version 1.0 really lacks something new to energize existing players. My biggest concern is that, much like Alpha 21, people will play it for a couple of weeks then realize that it's the same game as the last few years and just move on to other games again. It likely holds far more for new players rather than old returning players. What are your thoughts? Over and out!